What up peeps? Welcome to a pickup video. We have a lot of new subscribers on the channel, so uh, you guys, some of the new people who are watching may not have seen any of my pickup videos before. Uh, if you're not familiar, basically what it is is just a video where I go through and show you guys everything that I have added to my personal collection since the last pickup video that I filmed. So I think that the last one I did was quite a while ago, uh, definitely over probably a couple months ago. Um, so we have a lot of stuff to go through, a lot of really rare games and really awesome stuff that I have added to the collection that I'm excited to share with you guys. Um, <clears throat> so I have everything surrounding me in like a horseshoe type shape. And basically, we're just going to go through, I'm going to show you guys everything that I picked up. Not everything's going to have an interesting story or anything like that. And obviously, I have not played the majority of these games, but um, it's basically just to share what I have picked up and show you guys the progression of my collection. So with that said, let's just jump into it. And we're going to start with, usually I start this way with kind of like the weird stuff, the toys, the promotional items, the just uh, display stuff and then accessories, consoles, and then we finish off with all the games. So, first up, we have a little Nintendo antenna topper. It's got like a poison mushroom on there. <clears throat> I don't really have anywhere to put this stuff either. So, And then we have a pure solar keychain, which was uh, like one of the first like homebrew Dreamcast games that came out. Um, quite a while ago now, actually. We have a little thing of Super Mario Legos. Somebody sent this into the store for me. Uh, I think there's one for us, one for Ryan, which is very cool. We also have a little Yoshi plush here with the little tag. Uh, this one, it's a Nintendo 64 Nintendo Collectibles licensed merchandise, but the the brand is Toy Sight. So the main brand, when you see like the little Nintendo Collectibles thing, it's like it's like B, D, and A, or something like that is the brand. But this one's Toy Sight. The Yoshi looks quite a bit different from the other ones. Very, very cool piece. I love collecting all the Nintendo 64 plushies. We also have a little Metroid vinyl figure. Um, this is a Culture Fly one. So I think this came in like that Metroid box that had like a tote bag and a bunch, just a bunch of other random stuff in it. Also have some... Uh, some like retro Pokemon thank you notes uh, with Meryl on the front there. These are from night or these are from 2000, so pretty old. And then really really happy to get this. This is the Super Mario Bros. 2 and Zelda 2 Adventure of Link um, Nintendo Power lunchbox. So this makes five lunch boxes now that I have in my collection. Um, at least five of like the old ones uh there there are like some newer lunch boxes that include like a bunch of ds accessories and stuff like that i don't know if i have any of those in my collection um, but specifically with the old ones i have two different versions of the original mario bros lunchbox there's one that has the rounded corners like this and there's one that's like way more squared but they have the same image I have a really old metal Pac-Man lunchbox, and then I have a Street Fighter 2 lunchbox that looks just like this, but it's blue. And so I got this one here. Very, very cool. It's got the thermos with it. It's just missing the cup, the, the lid for the thermos, but it's just a standard red Aladdin lunchbox lid. Aladdin is the brand that makes these plastic ones. So that will not be difficult to find a lid to kind of complete that. So that'll be pretty cool. Also, just recently, Someone traded in the Ninja Turtles uh, complete series on DVD here. There's all the discs. And it comes in the cool little Turtles van. Um, I do enjoy the, Ninja, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon, so I wanted to uh, keep this one, add it to the collection, and I'm definitely going to be watching those, um, especially after we move and we get the new game room set up. That'll be really, really cool to put those on while I'm rearranging or, you know, re like moving stuff around. That'll be really, really fun to watch those. <clears throat> we have an empty console box here, which I also got pretty recently. It's the Metroid Prime GameCube bundle. So it's a black console box with the Metroid Prime slipcover. There's nothing inside the box, so I need to get everything to complete it. But the slipcover is the main thing that uh, is hard to find from that set. Everything else is just a regular... A regular bundle. 
We also have the NES Classic and Super Nintendo Classic. These are the Nintendo refurbished variants, I guess you could call them. Um, so these came directly from Nintendo's website, which is store.nintendo.com. We've been buying a bunch of these to sell in the store because people ask for them all the time, and we've actually been doing really, really well with them. They're pretty cheap to get from Nintendo directly, but not many people realize you can do that. I think now the Super Nintendo ones are sold out, but, they, but last time I looked, they still had the NES ones. Uh, so we're able to sell them for cheaper than what the cheapest ones on eBay are going for, but we're still able to make a little bit of money, and then I grabbed one of each for myself as well, just to add to the collection. I try to buy some of the some of the refurbished systems uh, from Nintendo's website pretty often. So I've got um, I've got a couple I think a couple different um, like 3DS consoles that come in refurbished boxes like those, which I just think is kind of cool. I think in the future a lot of people will not have those versions of the boxed system, so just kind of cool. That's why I grabbed them. Um, I also have three little Retro City Rampage figures here. These were available on V Blank, v -Blank Entertainment's website. Um, so you'll see the games to go along with those later in the video. But uh, I think all three of them was like 10 bucks or something, so I grabbed those. We also have a boxed Atari 5200 controller. I don't add a lot of Atari stuff to the collection, um, but I'm kind of a sucker for like boxed accessories and controllers especially. So I had to pick that up. I actually got that from Pink Gorilla last time we were up there. We also have a factory sealed uh, clear green Dreamcast VMU or memory card. So now I have uh, sealed in that sort of packaging. I have the clear blue, the clear green, and the clear black. And then in the regular packaging, like the old school one, I have just a regular white one that's brand new as well. We also got this DS Lite, which is complete in the box. This is a Japanese version, and this is a Japanese exclusive color, which is Enamel Navy. So, it looks pretty blue on the box, but I took it out earlier, and it's almost black. It is such a dark blue, but it's very, very cool. We also have some soundtracks and other stuff here. We have a Devil May Cry 4 bonus DVD, a Disgaea D2 Brighter Darkness official soundtrack, the Guided Fate Paradox, Celestial Hymns and Haws soundtrack. The Grand Theft Auto San Andreas soundtrack. Atelier Iris Eternal Mana bonus soundtrack CD. This one's sealed. And then lastly, the Majora's Mask 3D official soundtrack from Club Nintendo. Very cool. We also have a factory sealed Nintendo DSi 8GB SanDisk SD card. Super weird item, but it is branded for the, you know, for the DSi, which I think is pretty cool. I've got one just like this that's branded for the Wii. So, just kind of cool pieces for the, you know, the uh, accessory collection, I guess you could say. I've got a couple Joy-Con sets here. This one, this one is complete in the box. It's for the neon yellow. And then this one is sealed in the box. It's for the blue and neon yellow. So I think we're up to four, four boxed Joy-Con sets, um, you know, minus the ones that came with our systems, of course. We also have a black PSP Go. I actually got the box and paperwork and stuff for this quite a long time, and then someone traded in the system to the store. Um, so with that, I was able to combine them and get that for the collection. And then we also have the new 3DS, which is the Pokemon... Uh, Pokemon Red and Blue one, which these are actually really, really expensive. Um, I actually put this into my spreadsheet earlier today so that I could film this video and then get everything put away. And the cheapest one of these on eBay with the box is like $400, which is crazy. I did not think that they were going to be going for that much. I figured it would have been a more popular version of the console and more people would have bought it, but I don't know, maybe it was really limited. Also, we have in this little box, this is a pre-order bonus for New Super Mario... I can't ever remember if it's New Super Mario Bros. 2 or New Super Mario whatever it is, but it's a little gold Mario pin. Of course, it doesn't want to focus. There you go. <laughs> so, pretty cool stuff. Um, I'm going to see if I can zoom out just a little bit. I feel like I'm zoomed in pretty far. Okay, so 
We also have a couple controllers and stuff here that are custom painted that somebody sent us and I, I'm pretty sure the guy's name was Matt and uh, he sent these in and these are super super nice very very well done. The first one he sent is this uh, like sparkly purple uh, Dreamcast controller and it has a if I can get it out it has a matching VMU to go along with it so that is super awesome. I love custom painted stuff, especially when it's done with like, you know, automotive paint and clear coat and it's done the right way. And he's definitely doing them the right way. So he sent me that one first and then he sent a second, uh, second box like months, I th like a couple months later. And he sent this one for Abby. It's a wave bird that's like sparkly pink. Super cool. And then the other one that he sent me was another wave bird. And it just looks like a blue blue and black kind of swirly thing until you see it up close. I'm hoping it's going to focus on that. Yeah. So you can see it's got like all sorts of stuff on it. Very metal looking, which is very appropriate for me. So that is super, super cool. I love this controller. It is beautiful. It feels great. Super, super awesome. So we have some figures here. I was just trying to figure out what to show next. Um, this is the ultra detail figure from Super Mario Brothers 3. I believe this is like a newly produced figure, um, 2015, but it's like retro style. Very, very cool. And then also got another Final Fantasy 7 Extra Knights figure. And either in the last video or maybe the one before, pickup video, I mean, um, I showed what was like th three or four of these that I got um, before and then uh, I traded a game with my friend Scott to get this one from him and this is one of them that I did not have and this is Vincent Valentine so pretty cool stuff like I said I already have three or four other ones um, I don't know exactly how many there are it looks like on the back it's showing one two three four five six showing seven on the back um, so need a few more it looks like but yeah, I love collecting video game action figures, especially the old ones. Um, like, Nintendo releases a ton of figures now, and I can't possibly keep up with all of that. But for, like, the, you know, the older figures and stuff, like PS2 and before, um, I really love collecting those, especially, like, the 90s ones. So um, I have a few more here to show you as well. I have an Onimusha 2, I think it's Gogan Dante's figure. Uh, but I picked this up on our last, like, game hunting road trip up in Seattle at a store called uh, Game Over Video Games, I think it was. And I can't, it was marked at 20, but they had some sort of deal going. I can't remember exactly what it was, but um, I got it for a pretty good price, I remember. And then this one you guys have probably seen. This is the Resident Evil uh, Series 2 Claire Redfield uh, bloody variant figure from Code Veronica. And we have a bunch of these for sale actually at the store. So if you're interested in one of these, we still have probably like, I don't know, 10 of them. Um, so you can buy them directly on our website. It's just doublejumpvideogames.com if you're interested. They are $29.99 plus shipping, of course. But yeah, pretty cool. And apparently the Canadian or the, the, blood, the bloody variant, she's got like blood splatters on her. Um, apparently that's like a Canadian ex exclusive type thing. We're not in Canada. We're in the United States. So it's kind of cool to get that. And then the last figure is probably the coolest one I think that I picked up. Also got this on our trip uh, up to Seattle from a store. I think it was called Retro Emporium. Uh, but this is a Legend of Dragoon figure for the character Rose, which I've never. I didn't even know that there was that there was uh, figures for Legend of Dragoon until seeing this one at that store. And I was like, man, that is so freaking cool. It was marked at 40. I think uh, I think that I got a little bit of a discount on it. I don't really remember, but super, super cool. I'd love to get the rest of those for that set. Um, on the wall over here, I know you guys can't see it, but um, I have a bunch of my like video game related figures up there. I've got Soul Calibur, uh, I think a Soul Calibur 1 figure, Quake 2, a character from the Super Mario Brothers movie, uh, Tomb Raider, Darkstalkers 3, Duke Nukem, Resident Evil, uh, Soul Calibur 2 figures. Um, multiple Tomb Raider, multiple Duke Nukem, multiple Darkstalkers. 
Um, and then I have the Link and Ganondorf, some Pokemon ones. There, there's a Crash Bandicoot one. There's all sorts of really cool stuff, and I can't wait until we move and have a bigger game room, and I can actually display all of them, because I over here, in a box on the floor, I've got a bunch of Street Fighter figures, which are, are older ones, and I'd love to be able to display them all and maybe just have like one wall where it's just all the action figures. I think that'd be really, really cool. Just don't have the space right now, unfortunately. So... The last thing that I have to show you guys before we get into just the games are some boxed Nintendo 64 controllers. And uh, if you guys have been watching the vlogs, you know that recently I've been getting quite a few of these and I've been I've been enjoying collecting them again. Um, I've always been interested in them. I finished the North American set of complete and box controllers. A lot of them came in cardboard boxes. Um, and then the Fantastic series for North America came in blister packs. So. You can't really get them complete. It's either loose or sealed to get those with their original packaging. So I've been going after those, and I only need two more uh, of the Fantastic. Well, I need gold and then fire, fire orange, to complete the North American set completely. Um, so I've been working on the Japanese set, and so I have four controllers here from the Japanese set that I have added to the collection recently. And I actually have some more coming in the mail right now as well. So uh, the next pickup video, he'll see even more. So right now, I have to show you guys the black and green. These are just your standard colors. It's just a solid black, solid green. Um, so the only two left that I need to finish the standard colors for the Japanese ones, um, just like the regular ones, is red and gray. So I've got, I've got yellow, blue. I've got the green and black now, obviously. Um, and then there are a few other like special edition type ones and stuff like that that I need to grab. Um, but I'm getting really close to completing the Japanese set as well, which I think is really, really cool. We also have the clear blue and white controller. This box is pretty rough. It's got a large rip on the back right here, uh, which, which is unfortunate because other than that, the box is in pretty good shape. Uh, but still, this is a really cool one. I'm still missing the uh, watermelon and white controller. It looks just like that, where it's got the, the pink on the top and the white on the bottom. And then lastly, from the Japanese ones, I have the Midnight Blue controller. Uh, this is the other style of packaging that the Japanese controllers come in. This is, uh, like most of the regular ones come in the first style that I showed you. A lot of these ones are like the later ones that have um, like more of the special edition and stuff like that. This is uh, Midnight Blue, which is uh, pretty much just grape. It's uh, the like the dark, clear purple. And then lastly, this one actually comes from Australia. So in Australia, they didn't get all the fantastic colors. They only got four of them. Um, they got Ice Blue, Jungle Green, Grape Purple, and I believe Fire. Um, if they got the other consoles, because I'm not 100% sure, if they got the other colored systems, they didn't have the controllers released separately like this. So this is the Australian boxed version of the Ice Blue Nintendo 64 controller. It's got some tape right here holding it closed, which is definitely not coming off. And then it has rips over here where obviously something else was holding it closed and it got ripped open. But these controllers are pretty hard to get in the box, especially in the United States, because obviously they're coming from Australia. So you either have to import them or buy them from someone who has already imported them, which can be very difficult to find. So this is the only one of those four so far that I have. So I'll definitely be looking for the rest. Um, I guess if you guys have any, <laughs> let me know. So that is it for all of the controllers, accessories, toys, all that kind of stuff. So from now on, we're only going to be looking at games um, for the most part. So... I'm going to start off with, I don't, I didn't even plan, so I don't know what, <laughs> I guess I'll start off with the Nintendo Switch. Um, I have, I always have a lot of Switch games to show, of course it's the newest console that's out right now from Nintendo, um, so games are coming out all the time, I'm trying to keep up with as many special editions as I can, because tracking them down later will probably be a bit more expensive and more difficult, so I try to pick up as many as I can. So. You're going to see a lot of those here. So starting for the Nintendo Switch, we have Undertale Collector's Edition. Pretty cool box set with this little like pendant or necklace or whatever it is in there. And then we have Shadowgate. This is the classic edition, so it looks like an NES box here from Limited Run. This is number 66, if 
from them. We also have Bud Spencer and Terrence Hill Slaps and Beans Old School Heroes Edition. This is from Strictly Limited Games. Big heavy box here. Cool stuff. I feel like that one's gonna be pretty hard to find in the future. It's very unusual. <laughs> and then we have to uh, test uh, Destiny Connect TikTok Travelers Time Capsule Edition. And you'll notice most of these are factory sealed as well because I have not played any of them yet, obviously. Some of them I don't really have any intention of playing, so they're probably going to stay sealed. Um, others, if I want to play them, I'll open them. I don't care. We have Hello... I, I hate the name of this game because it's so hard to pronounce. Indiecalypse? It's like Indie Apocalypse, but they put it together. So I don't really know how you're supposed to say it. <laughs> so there's that. And then we have the Steam World Collection, which is Steam World Heist and Steam World Dig from Super Rare Games. It's like a double pack. We have Brigandine, The Legend of Run Runersia. Or Runersia. I'm not really sure how to pronounce that. This is from Limited Run number 71. This is the collector's edition of that one. Then we have Hero Land, the Knowable Edition. Uh, this is a PAL game, and luckily the Switch is region-free. Um, but I think this was a, a PAL exclusive, at least from what I could tell. Um, I think that I got this off of like Amazon or something, and it was only like 30, 25, 30 bucks. And then we have the Rune Factory 4 Special Archival Edition. We are actually carrying these at my store as well, so that's where I got this. I just ordered one extra one when we were making our wholesale order. Also... Uh, same with the Rune Factory. We also have the Shantae Half Genie Hero Ultimate Edition, which I also got basically from my store. Then we have Trine Series 1 through 3. We have the Count Lucanor Signature Edition, another PAL game. We have another limited run game here. This is Blasphemous, and I think this is the the retail variant or the Best Buy cover variant. This is uh, number 52 from Limited Run. Then we have the Little Inferno, um, I guess, collector's edition from Super Rare Games. It's in a big box there. It's, it looks like it's got the game and then maybe a steel book as well. And then we have the Ultra Collector's Edition of Indie Calypse, if that's even how you say it. And then we have the Streets of Rage 4 with the soundtrack here. Uh, this is also limited run number 65. Valfaris, or Valfaris, I don't know how to pronounce that one. And then a bunch of games from Super Rare. We have World of Goo, The Sexy Brutale, Graceful Explosion Machine, Tricky Towers Collector's Edition, and I showed you guys the Collector's Edition of Little Inferno, and here is the regular version as well. Super Rare Games doesn't typically do Collector's Editions, usually all their games are kind of Collector's Editions. Um, well, they're at least limited, um, but for Little Inferno they did one of each, which I thought was kind of cool. I think that's the first time that they've done that. And then we also have the Golf Story Collector's Edition, comes with this big trophy and then a, a golf ball so it's pretty cool and then in this box we have the bubble bobble for friends uh, special edition so there's that comes with a coaster and a card and some extra little stuff in there it's kind of cool that the the box is branded with everything too. And then the last Switch game I have to show you guys is this. This is the Disaster Report for, um, I can't remember the tagline for it, but basically this is the special edition of the game. Comes in this huge bag here. This is the second Switch game now that I have that came in a bag. The first one is the Shaq Fu Collector's Edition. Came in like a, a yellow like gym bag type thing with like a with a hat and a vinyl soundtrack and all sorts of stuff. Um, I hope that they don't continue releasing games in giant bags like that, though, because they're the hardest thing to display, and they're they're massive. I don't have room for too many more of that kind of thing. And then to go along with the Switch, I guess these are controllers, so I should have shown them already, but we have the uh, Nintendo Switch Online controllers for the NES and the Super Nintendo. 
I got these directly from Nintendo's website. I guess I got lucky because everyone was telling me that uh, they're always sold out. And when I looked, I was I was just looking to see what was on the website, and they happened to have both of those. So I was like, oh, I guess I'll order them. Didn't know that they were normally sold out, so I think I got kind of lucky there. But uh, it's pretty cool. So moving on, I only have a couple original Xbox games here. First, it's just a demo. This is one of the uh, Xbox Magazine demos. So I'm kind of going for a complete set of these, but I, I don't collect 360, so I'm only looking for original Xbox, and I'm only looking for them in these cases. I know some of them came in like little paper sleeves. I don't want those. This is Holiday 2000, 2004, disc number 39, and I think that I've got something like like 10 to 15 of them so far. It's not anything that I'm really looking for, honestly. Like If I happen to find one, if, if one comes to the store in a bundle, you know, and I don't have it, I'll add it to the collection, but... I just think maybe it'd be cool to have all those lined up on the shelf. And then the other two games, we have Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And then a factory sealed copy of Psychonauts. And I found this at Next Level Games um, up past Seattle. And uh, it was priced cheaper than a complete copy would be. So I was very happy to grab that. And uh, <clears throat> I've been talking a lot recently about not really caring too much about factory sealed games. And... That has not changed. Um, you will see more sealed games here. I'm not against factory sealed games. I still think it's cool to have some in the collection, but when it comes to games that are really, really expensive sealed, I'm fine with having a complete copy. And for example, my sealed big box Pokemon box for the GameCube, if I can sell that and buy a complete one and have some money left over, I'll be happy to do that. But you will see other factory sealed games here. Like I said, I'm still interested in collecting them here and there, but I never go out of my way to get them. So, next up, <clears throat> let's take a look at some Game Boy stuff. One cartridge, just to complete an empty box I had, is Dave Mira's Freestyle BMX 2, and I had a baggie to go along with that. And then I got a big stack of manuals here uh, that go to boxes that I already have. I was just missing the manuals. I'm just going to go through them like this so you can see. But there's some pretty good ones here. Some of these, the boxes might actually be in the stuff that I have yet to show you. But uh, it's always nice to complete boxes like that and get these manuals. I'm pretty sure the majority of these came from Pink Gorilla, with the exception of this one, maybe? I don't remember. Maybe I, Actually, I think this is a duplicate, because I think the box I have to show you has one in there. So, I have the uh, limited run Star Wars... Game Boy. Somebody sent this to the store as a gift, uh, which is very, very nice. You never have to do that. Please don't. But uh, it is appreciated, of course. You know, this is really awesome. I love the old style packaging that they did for some of those. So we have two Game Boy Advance videos. We have Dragon Ball GT and All Grown Up. These sometimes are actually easier to get factory sealed than they are just to get complete. So found these at uh, Recycle Video Games in Oregon. So with the games here, I have tried to kind of sort them so that uh, I'm saving the best for last in each stack. Um, so the rarest the rarest game might not be at the complete end of the video, but the rarest GameCube game will be the last GameCube game that I show you, for example. So there's a bunch of random filler games here for Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance, and then I have a separate stack of the better stuff. So we have the Pac-Man Classic NES series, Quest for Camelot, Agassi Tennis Generation, Crash Bandicoot Huge Adventure, a sealed copy of Thai Tasmanian Tiger 3, and my legs are falling asleep real bad, Chess Master. This one, I don't know why Abby made us buy this from Pink Gorilla, it's the Koala Brothers, um, but this is sealed. We already had a sealed copy. This is just a slight condition upgrade. <laughs> so we're going to have one of those for sale at the store. Uh, World Bowling. A sealed copy of Herbie Fully Loaded and a sealed Cartoon Network Speedway. Even sealed, those games are like five bucks. Uh, SRS, which is a Street Racing Syndicate, and then NBA in the Zone 2000. This one does have a manual, so the other one I showed you is an extra, so that'll be going to the store. I don't have a cartridge for this yet, but it's a really, really cheap game. Uh, SpongeBob SquarePants Revenge of the Flying Dutchman. Camp Lazlo Leaky Lake Games. A sealed copy of Dogs for Game Boy Color. And Lego Island 2. So those are all of like the filler ones. 
And then the better stuff here, we have Power Mission for the original Game Boy. I need a manual for this. If anyone has one, please let me know. Then we have the classic NES series Legend of Zelda in very, very good condition. We have Doom for the Game Boy Advance. Mega Man uh, Battle Network 3 Blue version. Street Fighter Alpha 3. And some of these are box only. Some of them are box and manual only. Some of them are cartridge and box only. And some of them are complete. I didn't take the time to go through and figure out what it is. Each, it says it in my spreadsheet, but I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, Super Robot Tyson 2 Original Generation. A very nice condition upgrade for my copy of The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages. This is the first print with like the holographic looking cover, and this still has the plastic on the box. It's not sealed, of course, but uh, very, very good condition. So we're going to have a complete one of these for the store. And then finally for Game Boy Color, we have Metal Gear Solid, which is a pretty rare game. I need a manual for this one as well. If you guys have one of these, please let me know. Last I looked, there was one on eBay, but it's like 40 bucks and it's pretty wrinkled. All the other ones that I've seen sell on eBay recently went for 30 and they were in better condition, so I didn't want to buy the one for 40 But if you guys have a manual, please let me know. I need to change my position here because my leg's killing me. And if, yes, I'm not wearing pants, so... <laughs> deal with it okay let's take a look at some dreamcast games so same deal with this i have one stack of kind of just some filler and cheaper stuff and then i have one stack of the better stuff um so as you guys may or may not know i have a complete wii u collection and i have a complete nintendo 64 collection of north american games missing some variants here and there but for the most part you know i've got i've got at least one of every game so um, I try to focus on one or two systems at a time uh, to build towards that complete set. And so after finishing Wii U and N64, which were the first two I was focusing on, I decided to start focusing on Virtual Boy and GameCube. So I'm at the point with both collections now where Virtual Boy, there's only 14 North American games. I need two more, Nestor's Funky Bowling and Jack Bros, of course, which is like $1,000. So... I am still looking for those two Virtual Boy games, but I can't really add games to my Virtual Boy collection very often, so I pretty much have just been focusing on GameCube. But with GameCube, I'm kind of at the point now where the majority of what I need are just cheaper filler titles, and I'm not going to go on eBay and spend 10 or 15 bucks a piece to get these games, which is what a lot of the filler titles are going for now. So my plan with GameCube at this point, there's still a couple titles that I'm looking out for, like NCAA College Basketball 2K3. That's the main one that I still need. And then uh, Zatch Bell Momoto Fury, I think it is, whatever the more expensive one is. Um, so there's a couple games like that that I still need, but I have like all the other rare games. So I'm waiting for those games to come into the store so that I can add them to my collection that way to get them cheap because the games are just, their prices are dumb right now, and I can't afford that. So, I still need like 150 GameCube games left, so what I've tried to kind of do is, because both collections, Virtual Boy and, and GameCube, they're kind of paused right now. I'm still working on them, but I can't, I can't add to them as quickly as I would like to, or as much as I would like to. So, I was kind of thinking, you know, what am I going to focus on next? and I decided to go with Dreamcast. The Dreamcast collection is not too big, and I already had most of the expensive games out of the way. There's a lot of like 30, 40, 50, you know, 60, 70, $70 games that I still need, but for all the ones that are like over a hundred bucks, I pretty much have all of them now, um, with the exception of like a couple special edition type stuff. So focusing on Dreamcast has been really fun for me because when we took our last couple game hunting road trips, I found a ton of stuff. So I have a lot of Dreamcast games here to show you guys. So starting off, a couple like homebrew games. We have Cool Herders and I think it's Makwa Pie. It's like a, a Mahjong type game. Um, I thought that I had one more like homebrew game to show you guys, but I, I didn't see it in here. It might be in the stack and I might have just missed it. Um, but still very cool. Got those. Um, actually, every th all the Dreamcast games here either came from a retro game store that I physically visited in person, it came from a retro game store's website that I purchased from, or it came from a trade-in at my store, 
or it came from a purchase from another collector on like Facebook or something like that. So none of these came from eBay, which I think is really, really, really cool. So we have MTV skateboarding, trick style, Rip and Riders, Sydney 2000, NFL 2K2, Alien Front Online. I know there's a big box version of this as well, which I still need to get, but I like to have, you know, both basically. NHL 2K2, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Rogue Spear, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1. This is the Sega All Stars variant, which is basically like player's choice or greatest hits. Um, I don't usually go after the greatest hits type stuff. Um, I plan to eventually, but what I want to do is like for PS2, I'm going to go for the Black Label set first, and once I finish that, then I'll go and track down all the player's choice variants. But with Dreamcast, I'm since Dreamcast is kind of hard to come by anyway, I'm going for them now. I'm doing the same thing with N64. Um, I have I have all the you know I have at least one of each game. Some of them may be player's choice, but uh, a lot of games have both versions, of course. So I'm you know I'm grabbing those when I see them. Sega Smash Pack Volume One, Revolt, Metropolis Street Racer. Matt Hoffman's Pro BMX, which was never as good as Tony Hawk. <laughs> Test Drive Le Mans. Legacy of Kane, Soul Reaver. Slave Zero. Maximum Pool. Flag to Flag. This one is a little bit more expensive, but I left it in the cheap stack because it's a sports game. NBA Hoops. I think it goes for like 30 bucks. WWF Royal Rumble. Toy Commander, Dead or Alive 2, WWF Attitude, Star Wars Jedi Power Battles, Space Channel 5, South Park Chef's Love Shack, Samba de Amigo, and then Speed Devils and Speed Devils Online Racing. And then into the, the more expensive stack, I guess you could say. I have three sealed games. These are still kind of cheap. Tennis, 2K2. They just happen to be sealed. Uh, Fighting Force 2 and NBA Showtime, NBA on NBC. So those three are sealed. And then we have uh, Prince of Persia, Arabian Nights, Mr. Driller, Psychic Force 2012, Gauntlet Legends, which is a fantastic game. King of Fighters Dream Match 1999. King of Fighters Evolution. Time Stalkers. Silver. Seventh Cross Evolution. And then the last three here are some heavy hitters. We have Gunbird 2. Giga Wing 2. And finally, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. So, with adding these three to the collection, those last three, um, I pretty much have any Dreamcast game that's over 100, with the exception of um, the Speed Devils, like, clean variant. Um, I still need the Sonic Adventure Limited Edition, um, and maybe a couple others that I just don't know about yet. Um, but I think for just your, the standard games, I pretty much have everything that's over 100 bucks, which I'm very, very happy about. Uh, with Dreamcast games, like I'm more than willing to pay retail on them if I can find them in person. Um, I just don't want to buy stuff off of eBay. I really like finding it in person. Uh, when it comes to GameCube games, <laughs> even finding them in person, like the first game here, Marvel Nemesis, Rise of the Imperfects, I don't want to have to go to another game store and pay you know, $13 for this. Um, so with Dreamcast, I kind of feel like I might get pretty close to finishing that set even before the GameCube with the way that things are working out. But, um, you know, either way, I'm having fun collecting, which is all that matters. So first is that Marvel game. And we have Turok Evolution, Donkey Kong Jungle Beat. I think that I already have this game, but I have like the big box version with the, with the bongos. And then we have The Sims 2 Pets. NHL 2004, 
SSX3, Aggressive Inline, Need for Speed Underground, this is a factory sealed copy, Mission Impossible, Operation Therma, The Sims 2, and The Sims 1, Lara Croft, Tomb Raider Legend, FIFA Street 2, and then we get into like the better titles. We have Beautiful Joe 2, Metal Arms, Glitch in the System. This is a variant. This has the bonus strategy guide inside that's printed on the cover. And then inside it has this. So uh, my other copy does not have that paper inside and it does not have that printed on the cover. So I don't know how rare this is. Um, I couldn't find one on eBay, active or sold. Um, so it could be really hard to find or it could just be kind of an unknown variant that no one really cares about. I'm not really sure, but still very glad to randomly get that one. And we also have iNinja, which has gone up a lot in price recently, um, which kind of sucks because we, we've had copies of this at the store that we sold for like $15 and I didn't realize that I still needed it for my collection, and now it goes for about $40. So, had to pay more to get that. We have a factory sealed Sonic Gems collection. I don't remember where I got this, but I feel like it was from one of the stores on our one of our hunting road trips. And then the last three here I'm very, very happy to have. We have the Powerpuff Girls Relage Rampage Pickled Edition, uh, which someone sent us, and... They did not have to do that. It was very, very nice of them. Um, I think they said it was a duplicate or they like got it cheap in a bundle or something. Uh, but this game, I kind of have a funny story about this because this is one of those games that I knew was rare, but it was still cheap. And I made a video a while back talking about rare but cheap GameCube games. And shortly after my video came out, apparently someone else who has a bigger following than I, made a very similar style video about the GameCube, and people were posting stuff in all these GameCube collecting groups on Facebook, and I think the combination of all that stuff happening at once caused a lot of those games to start going up in price, and unfortunately one of them was Powerpuff Girls, which I did not have yet. Uh, my intention for making that video was never to increase prices, of course. It was simply to tell people about a few games here and there that they could pick up cheap that are harder to find, uh, just to help people out. And um, I did not have all the games in that video that I talked about, which I think kind of proves I wasn't, you know, if I was trying to make the prices go up, I would do it after I got them all, which I did not do. So that wasn't my intention, of course, but it happened. And I was looking at a copy of this on eBay and it was, I think, $21. And it came with a copy of, it was, it was either Vex or Scalar or something like that. Um, which is another GameCube game that's pretty cheap. And at the time, price chart said this was worth like 12 bucks. And the other game that was included with it was like an $8 game. And I was like, oh man, if, if, if I buy that, then, you know, I might be able to sell the other game for like 10 bucks in the store, which puts me at like, you know, $12 for Powerpuff Girls. That's too much. I don't want to pay that. <laughs> and of course now they sell for like, 80 bucks or whatever, which is crazy. Um, so I, you know, very, very thankful. Um, I believe the guy's name is Andrew that sent it. Um, if I, if that's incorrect, I do apologize. We have, we have so many people who watch the videos, of course, and a lot of people who, uh, regularly send us packages and it's hard to keep track of everyone. Um, but yeah, that's super, super nice. I, I never, never ask for donations. Um, do not expect them, of course, and prefer to not get them. <laughs> I'd rather buy the stuff or make it do a trade or something like that. But either way, that is super awesome. Very, very happy to have that. Thank you for sending that. This next one here, I picked up at a store called Al's uh, Music, Movies, and Games, I think it is. And this was up in Seattle on our trip. Got very, very lucky. This was priced at $29.99. Goes for about 100 bucks now or so, and that is Top Angler which aside from like special editions and aside from the uh, the NCAA game, this was the most expensive GameCube game that I still needed. Um, so I guess second most expensive. So I was very glad to find that for 30 bucks. That was 
definitely an old price because this game used to go for about 30 bucks. It's always been hard to find, but uh, now that everyone's going after GameCube stuff, the price has jumped up. And then lastly, this one I just got recently. My friend Sam grabbed this on eBay when he saw it posted for a really good price, and he grabbed it for me, and he was like, if you don't want it, no big deal. I'll keep it. It was a good price, but I did get it for you, so if you want it, it's yours for the, you know, for the price that he paid. So, of course, I did want it, and that is a complete copy of the Sonic Adventure 2 pack for the GameCube, which you guys, if you've been watching the vlogs you just saw recently, um, very, very, very rare. Uh, it's basically just the cardboard box that's rare. The games inside are just two player's choice copies of uh, Sonic Adventure DX and Adventure 2 Battle. Uh, but I used to have this in my collection when I lived in Florida, and when I sold everything, it went with that. Uh, unfortunately, I wish I would have kept it. Um, but my GameCube collection is pretty much back to where it used to be right before I sold everything because I was working on the GameCube set before. I think I was closer to completing it than I am now, but... I have, aside from NCAA 2K2, I have all the rare games that I had before now with that one. So I have the Sonic Adventure 2-pack, I have the Monkey Ball 2-pack, I'm just missing the Sonic and Monkey Ball Duo pack, which comes in a yellow box. If any of you guys happen to have that, please get in contact with me, let me know. Um, I'm looking for it, it's expensive, I don't know if I'm willing to pay eBay prices for it, because it sells for like $3,000, but I'd love to get one eventually. Uh, if I could ever work out a trade for one, that'd be awesome. Next up, two Atari Lynx games, just random sealed copy of Super Squeak and Power Factor. And then let's move on to Game Gear real quick. I don't ever get Game Gear games. Uh, so we have Poker Face Paul's Poker, Columns, Caesar's Palace, Sonic Spinball, and Bugs Bunny in Double Trouble. So... That almost doubles my Game Gear collection. <laughs> and then let's go on to PS1. I think I need to pick up the pace here a little bit. This video is going to be super long. One long box game that is loaded. I think I have like 40-ish long box games now, something around there. I should probably count them because I feel like I mention it in every video. And it's probably always wrong, but I love getting the long box games. So for PS1, I also tried to order these in in order of like least cool or cheapest to most expensive or most rare. So first up we have Jumpstart Wildlife Safari Field Trip, Roswell Conspiracies, The Amazing Virtual Sea Monkeys, Floating Runner Quest for the Seven Crystals. A lot of these games I had never seen or heard of until getting them. Uh, so I love getting games like that of course. F1 Racing Championship. Buster Bros Collection, Star Gladiator Episode 1, Final Crusade. If it's Episode 1, how is it the Final Crusade? <laughs> Dracula, The Resurrection, Vigilante 8, Crypt Killer, King's Field, the Jewel Case variant, Muppet Monster Adventure, which is like a $50 game, which is, that's crazy to me. Bloody Roar, the first one. Bugs Bunny and Taz, Time Busters, and Bugs Bunny Lost in Time. For some reason, like the Warner Brothers games are expensive for PS1. We have Carnage Heart. Fatal Fury, Wild Ambition. Vampire Hunter D. A sealed copy of Inuyasha, A Feudal Fairy Tale. Dino Crisis 1. This was just a condition upgrade. Uh, my previous copy was kind of worn. That's Wu-Tang, Shaolin style. And then the last three, we have The City of Lost Children. Echo Knight. And finally, we have Tail Concerto. So, awesome PS1 additions to my collection there. PS1 is a set that I think would be really, really cool to complete, but there are just so many expensive games. Not only is it a very large library, but the amount of like like $50 plus games compared to a lot of other systems is really, really high. <laughs> so I got a couple of them here, which I'm happy about. I'm just going to keep plugging away at that, kind of how I'm doing it now. 
The only PS1 games I really add to my collection are long box ones I don't have, or games I've never heard of, games that are uncommon or rare, or RPGs. So those are the games that I'm kind of looking out for, and you'll see that that's mostly what I'm adding to the collection. Um, even that Jumpstart, Safari, whatever, I've never seen that game before. It's really, really cheap. It's like a $4 game, but I've never seen it. So once I do start focusing on PS1, that might be a game that is cheap, but maybe it's just kind of hard to find. So that's the kind of stuff I'm looking for now and knocking off the list early. Moving on to PlayStation 2, we have Constantine. A sealed copy of Aeon Flux, a sealed copy of World Championship Poker, a sealed copy of Rugby 2004, a sealed copy of Rainbow Six 3, a sealed copy of NHL Face Off 2003, and a sealed copy of SOCOM 2. Nothing too special there. And then the better titles, we have The Red Star. The King of Fighters 98 Ultimate Match, which uh, this one I picked up from Half Price Books up near Seattle. I had never seen this game before, and uh, they had it for a pretty good price. I was happy with that. And then uh, Stella Dues or Duet, whatever it is, The Gate of Eternity. And then Virtual on Mars. And then the last one here is a special edition. This one just happens to be sealed, and that is the Dragon Ball Z Budokai 3 Limited Edition which has a little Dragon Ball in here. It comes in this really weird shaped box. <laughs> and I got this from Retro Game Trader in Beaverton. Uh, if you want to watch that video, I picked up some really cool stuff. It was called, I think it was called like uh, Game Hunting with Friends or something like that. Uh, but yeah, pretty cool stuff. So moving on to the original DS. Uh, nothing, well, the last one's kind of cool, I guess. We have a sealed copy of Star Wars, The Clone Wars, a sealed copy of Phineas and Ferb, uh, Hidden Mysteries, Salem Secrets. Abby wanted to pick this one up. It's heavily water damage. I don't know if you can see that, uh, but it is complete. And then the one cool one is Monster Tail. This one I think I traded into the store and I had never heard of it. And I was like, man, that looks cool. So definitely had to hold on to that. And then let's jump straight into 3DS. So <laughs> most of these are just factory sealed. Um mainly just first-party Nintendo titles that have just happened to be traded into the store. Uh, we have Metroid Prime Federation Force, Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D, the Nintendo Selects version. I do collect the Nintendo Selects uh, versions. It's just the player's choice and platinum hits that I'm really not going for at the moment. Tetris Axis, Legend of Zelda Triforce Heroes, and Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer. And then the last 3DS game is opened, and this is a special edition. It's the Persona Q2 New Cinema Labyrinth Showtime Premium Edition. That is a mouthful. So it's got everything, including the little plush, the little dog plush and everything. Pretty cool box right there. I have a bunch. I'm trying to look up there. I have some, some other uh, special edition uh, DS games up there, mostly Bakugan. <laughs> For the Sega 32X, I got three cartridges that I already have boxes for. Um, so these are just to complete the boxes I have already. We have Virtual Racing Deluxe, NBA Jam Tournament Edition, and Doom. So I have some other empty boxes as well, like boxes and manuals. I just need some cartridges for them, so I was glad to at least get those. And then we're going to do Wii U and Wii. So like I said, I do have a complete North American Wii U collection, like I said, minus a few variants and special editions and stuff like that. Um, so this is kind of just like a bonus, um, a factory sealed copy of Hello Kitty Cruisers. We do have some of these at the store. Um, I think they're like 60 bucks, uh, which is the original retail price, which I think is, you know, it's kind of cool to be able to carry those. That game used to go, just opened for like $300 for a little bit there, which is ridiculous. Uh, I got my opened copy, luckily, from GameStop for like $23 right when it started to shoot up in price. I was very happy that I didn't have to pay $300 for them. And then I have two PAL import Wii U games here that came out just recently. We have the Shmup Collection. I actually hate the word Shmup. <laughs> but uh, this is numbered number 401 out of 3,000. So a pretty low number, kind of cool. And then also uh, Finding Teddy 2 Definitive Edition. 
and this is number 675 out of 3,000. These both came from a company called Pixel Heart. So if you're interested, I don't know if they still have any in stock, but you can check out their website. And then kind of similar to those from V Blank Entertainment, we have uh, Shakedown Hawaii and Retro City Rampage for the original Wii. So these are also PAL. Um, unfortunately, they, they couldn't get the, the rights to release them for the North American Wii for whatever reason, so they did PAL instead. So still cool. And we have a sealed copy of Counterforce, a sealed copy of Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, The Crystal Bearers, a sealed copy of A Boy and His Blob, and then a pretty uncommon uh, Wii game here called Gunslingers. Goes for like 40, 45 bucks. Um, yeah, never heard of this game until seeing it. Um, it was, I think I got this for another game store on one of our trips. It was priced at like $22.99, $23 I think it was. Um, and I never heard of it, so I looked it up and I was like, oh, it goes for like 40 bucks, so 22 is a pretty good price. So I grabbed that for the collection. Um, you, my Wii collection used to, be beh used to be behind me on the wall here, but I had to move it to make room for PS2, so you can see a little bit of it right here. The Wii stuff is on that side now. Um, we have almost 500 Wii games, which is crazy, and we're almost at 900 PS2 games, so uh, we're about halfway done with PS2. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at some PlayStation Portable games, some PSP. Um, actually, one Vita game first. We have Mind... Mind Zero, I think it is. And then for PSP, we have Mirror Mask, uh, which is a movie. I actually went through our collection and got rid of all the PSP movies, and I decided to not collect them. Abby wanted this one, though. Um, if it was up to me, I would sell this. <laughs> then we have a sealed copy of Resistance Retribution. A sealed copy of Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. Then a complete copy of Disgaea 2, Dark Hero Days. And a really expensive PSP game here. I don't know why it's so expensive. I got really lucky and found this at a store in Oregon. I think it was like 10 bucks. And uh, it goes for like 70 or 80. And that is Def Jam Fight for New York, The Takeover. So very happy to knock that one off the list for a decent price. Now let's look at some Sega stuff. I have um, three Genesis games, a Master System game, and then a bunch of Saturn and Sega CD games. So for Genesis, um, I, I don't usually go after too many Genesis games. Um, once I focus on that system, of course I will. But for now, I'm kind of just trying to add games to the collection that are a little bit more uncommon or expensive or rare RPGs, whatever. Um, or games like this, like Team USA Basketball. This is a sports game. If I had to guess without knowing, I would think this game is worth five bucks tops for a complete copy, but it actually goes for like 15 or 20 bucks, and I do not ever want to have to pay that much for it. So finding it cheap now, I'm going to hold on to it. Same with NBA Live 98, goes for like 15, 20 bucks. I'm never going to pay $20 for NBA Live, so might as well get it now. And then the one cool Genesis game I got is Predator 2, which looks amazing and then one master system game and uh this is one that ryan still needs he had the opportunity to buy this one and he passed on it and i told him i was like i was like are you sure you're not going to get that because we were at a game store together and i was like are you sure you don't want it because if you don't get it i'm going to buy it for my collection and he said no i'm gonna pass on it the very next day he told me he regretted passing on it <laughs> but that is golden axe warrior for the Master System, which is a pretty rare Master System game. Um, it has the American like UPC sticker on the, the box there, which um, makes it much more valuable. Uh, this one, it was marked at 260, and I'm pretty sure they were firm on that price. I'm taking the tag off now, I just left it on there. Um, so I'm pretty sure I had to pay that. Luckily it was in Oregon, so there was no tax, but they do sell for a bit more than that, so I'm pretty happy. I think when I when I bought it, I was looking them up, and one had recently sold for like three ten or three twenty. So two sixty, I think, is a is a very fair price. It's in excellent condition. It has a sticker. Very glad to knock that one off the list. And then for the Sega Saturn, got some pretty good ones here. Only five games, but 
pretty good overall. We have the Horde, which I had not heard of until seeing that one. Then we have Fighters Mega Mix. Last Bronx, which I got from Pink Gorilla. This one came from the same store that the Golden Axe did, and that is Earthworm Jim 2. That store, by the way, is Hawthorne Game Exchange, which is in Portland. Very awesome place. And then finally, this one came from one of the stores on our Seattle hunting trip. I can't remember the name of the store. Um, it was a very, very small place in a very weird plaza. Um, this was priced, I think, at 290 which was not a bad price. Um, that's about what it goes for. Um, or maybe it was 190 and it goes for about 200 I can't remember e either one. Uh, but basically... Um, got it for a pretty good price. Very happy. Very hard to find game, and that is Winning Post. It's a stupid horse derby game, but it's very rare. <laughs> so, cool one to knock off the list. And then for Sega CD, we have some really, really good games in here. Um, that's why I showed these after Saturn. I think the Saturn games are cool, but and there's there's cheaper stuff in here, but the one game, the last Sega CD game, I think it's cooler than, than winning posts. So we have Formula One Beyond the Limit, WWF Rage in the Cage, Ground Zero Texas, Bouncers, Midnight Raiders, and then the last three are the kind of like special ones, the, the more rare or uncommon ones. We have Starblade, Wild Woody. <laughs> Looks like Pen Sylvester or something. And then this one. Um, the, all th well, those two that I just showed you, plus this one, got traded into the store with a JVC XI console, which uh, my friend Sam ended up buying. Very glad he got that. That was a super cool system. Um, and this is a very rare Sega CD game. Uh, I've never owned this one before. Um, I've been collecting and buying and selling games since like 2007, 2008, and I've never owned a copy. So very glad to have it and knock it off the list for my Sega CD collection, and that is Lords of Thunder. I don't remember off the top of my head what it goes for, but I know it's over 300. Um, so very, very glad to get that one. So now we're, we have... Basically what we have left is Nintendo 64, Super Nintendo, and NES. And I'm going to go ahead and show you guys N64 first here because of the three, it is the the system I have the least to show you from. Um, so first up, a one of the not for resale cartridges that I did not have yet, that is Perfect Dark. Very happy to get that. I actually picked this up from a local store uh, from Retro Game Trader in Beaverton, Oregon. So. Very, very cool. I'm definitely going after all the not-for-resale games. Uh, I think I'm I think I'm up to like 10 of them so far. I don't, I don't even know how many there are, but it's going to be a very cool set to complete. And then we have the box and manual only for Mia Ham Soccer 64. This box is not in the best condition. It doesn't have a cartridge. The reason that I'm adding this to the collection is because my only other copy of this game is factory sealed. And if I have a sealed copy of a game... I personally want to have an opened complete copy as well so that if I ever want to play it or whatever it is um, I don't imagine I'm gonna to want to play this game in particular but if I have a sealed one I like to have an open one as well so that's why I added that one to the collection and then this was a very nice condition upgrade that is Star Fox 64 this box has the plastic on it as you can see just cut open at the side just how I like them um, so this replaced my other copy and this also has all the baggies, all the paperwork, this is 100% complete. My other copy did not have the baggies, and it was missing one of the things of paperwork. So, very glad to complete that one, upgrade it. And then, we have two Japanese import N64 games, which typically what I, what I try to do with imports is only collect the exclusives. So, I have some PAL exclusives, I have some Japanese exclusives, I have some PS2 uh, India exclusive games that Mook Jinder sent me, which is super cool. Um, <clears throat> so this one is a Japanese exclusive, and that is Bangayo, which I think it sells for something like $200, something crazy, I can't remember. Um, like, maybe, maybe just 100 I don't remember, honestly. But uh, 
yeah, this game came out on the Dreamcast. I have the Dreamcast version, um, so it's cool to get the N64 one. I know that there are plenty of uh, there are plenty of Japanese exclu exclusive N64 games, um, and I completed the North American set, so it would make sense that I would start to focus on the Japanese exclusives, but I just haven't yet because I don't care too much about imports. Um, if it was a game I wanted to play or something, that'd be different, but uh, I would, I'd like to eventually travel to Japan and be able to do some game hunting there, and I feel like if I could do that, that's probably when I would try to pick up a lot of that kind of stuff, um, because otherwise, the only way I can really get it is by buying it off of eBay. These two games were traded into the store uh, from one of our regulars, and uh, that is super cool, but that's not going to happen all the time. The other one is not a Japanese exclusive, because it did come out in PAL territories as well, but I don't know. I don't know which one I'd rather have. <laughs> They're all in English, so it doesn't matter, but that is Rakuga Kids. Um, and we were told this is kind of like a Street Fighter style, uh, like, you know, a 2D fighting game, but it has, like, really weird art style. Um, so, like I said, this is not a Japanese exclusive, but it did not come out in North America. So I just have to make the decision if I want the Japanese one or the PAL one. Um, I feel like I'd rather have the PAL one just because it probably comes in a more standard looking box. Uh, the Japanese boxes look way different from the PAL and North American ones, but that's the one we got. So I can't be too picky. <laughs> So moving on to Super Nintendo. Actually, let's do NES first because I think Super Nintendo has the rarest game. Well, I think the Sonic Adventure 2 pack was the rarest game in the entire video. But out of NES and Super Nintendo, there's definitely a more expensive Super Nintendo game than NES. So first up, we have Metal Storm. This is the uh, retro bit uh, licensed reproduction here. This is Galactic Blue. Which, we got another one traded into the store, which I kind of wish I would have kept now, because uh, that one was a black one, uh, which was sealed, and luckily it says it on above the barcode what color the cartridge is. It looks like the blue one might be the harder version to find, because when I was trying to look this up to see what it goes for to put it into my spreadsheet, I couldn't find any of them on eBay, posted or sold. I could only find the black ones, so if I'm going to keep one, I guess I kept the one that's harder to find, which I guess is cool. So we have a lot of filler titles for the NES, but first we have some stuff that I got to complete things I already had. So I got the uh, manual for RBI Baseball to complete my box, manual for Monster Party, manual for Mega Man 3, manual for Rescue Rangers, manual for Battletoads, and poster for Battletoads. And then a couple homebrews here. We have the very rare Grimsy 42. <laughs> which Grimsy sent me, along with the Game on Expo Retro Championships 2015, hand numbered 42 out of 200. And then a couple of cartridges that I needed to complete my boxes, just regular old MLB, and Spy Hunter, which has all the manuals and paperwork with it. And then we have one styrofoam. <laughs> so, on to just kind of like the cheaper stuff, the fillers. We have Double Dribble. 10-Yard Fight, Pinbot, Bo Jackson Baseball, Orb 3D, Short Order Explode, Skull and Crossbones, Codename Viper, and a lot of these are complete, but some of them may be missing a cartridge or a manual or something like that, um, but lots and lots of NES games here, which is cool. Unfortunately, my NES collection is boxed up because I just ran out of space. Uh, but once we move and get our ga our new game room set up, I will definitely be making room for this collection because it's growing and growing, and I would love to display it and have it ready to play. We have Kings of the Beach, Golf Grand Slam, Crazy Creatures, Bugs Bunny Birthday Blo uh, yeah Birthday Blowout, Ikari Warriors Two Victory Road, The Goonies Two. Vegas Dream. My only copy of this was sealed, so I had to get a, an open one. Athletic World, which I always think this game is like really expensive for some reason, and then it's not. I th did it. Did this come in like a bigger box version with the power pad? If it did, that's probably the one I'm always thinking of. 
And we have Legacy of the Wizard, To the Earth, The Moffat Conspiracy. We have a, uh, I believe this is just a PAL game, uh, did not come out in North America, and that is Road Fighter. I need a manual for this, though, if anyone has one. Uh, TNC, Surf Designs. Hoops. Shadowgate. So we got the NES one and the Switch one. Sesame Street, one, two, three. Pipe Dream. Narc. Star Trek, 25th anniversary. Where in Time is Carmen Sandiego, which comes in the big ass box with the encyclopedia. I also need a manual for this one, this Joshua, the Battle of Jericho. And then special ones. Uh, I also need, need a manual for this one that is Bases Loaded 4, which I guess is a pretty rare game. I didn't know, um, but I saw this one. Um, actually, the reason that I grabbed this is because um, I'm pretty sure that Sam, my friend Sam, had picked up a cartridge-only copy, and he told me, he's like, oh, I just got this game for a really good deal, and I was like, oh, I didn't even know that was rare. Um, so shortly after then, I saw this at Super Smash Games in Tacoma, Washington, and uh, didn't have a manual, but it was priced at like 30 bucks or something. And I was like, well, even without a manual, that's still a great price. I should be able to get a manual um, to complete it. And uh, I think they go for like 100 bucks. So pretty cool to get that one for a good price. And then we have Adventure Island 2 with the plastic on the box. Very nice. I think this was a, a condition upgrade for me. Same with The Adventures of Lolo 2. This one also has the plastic on the box and was also just a condition upgrade for me. Then we have Tengen Tetris. This one does not have a manual. If you have a manual, please let me know. And this cartridge was played and is signed by Thor uh, Ackerland, I think is how you say it, um, who is the guy that won the NWC. Um, so kind of cool, but I do need a manual if you guys have one. And then the last two NES games, we have an almost perfectly mint copy of Mega Man 5, which is the second to last Mega Man game that I needed uh, for the NES. The first one, or the last one that I needed, was Mega Man 1, which I now have. This is a nice condition, complete copy. Very, very nice shape on the box here. Uh, so those are the last two that I needed to complete the set, and I was very lucky, and I got both of them from the same person. And they were cheap. I think the Mega Man 5 was like 110 or something like that, and the Mega Man 1 was like 200 bucks, which this game goes for $500. So it was a really, really good price. I got these from... Um, I can't remember the name of the store, but there's a store that... They have a website that I've purchased from, and I follow them on Facebook, and they had posted a picture on Facebook of a bunch of games that came in, and it was all boxed NES stuff. And I saw the Mega Man 5 in the picture, and I was like, hey, is that for sale? And if so, how much? And they sent me a price. Luckily, I saw it pretty quick because people jumped on that listing, and apparently they were getting tons of messages, but I had first dibs, luckily. Um, so, got the Mega Man 5, asked about what else was in there, got more pictures, saw the Mega Man 1, and I was like, well, those are the last two that I need to complete the Mega Man set for NES, so I had to get them, and I'm really, really glad that I did. I was very, very happy with the condition, and of course, with the prices. Could not complain at all about that. So, lastly, is Super Nintendo stuff. We are getting down to the wire here, guys. So, first up, a bunch of manuals I needed to complete boxes. We have Cannondale Cup, Liberty or Death, I actually got this one off of eBay. I used my eBay bucks to get it. Uh, Stargate. NHLPA Hockey 93. Pilot Wings. Mickey's Ultimate Challenge. And Young Merlin. So those are for boxes that I already have. Some of them may still need cartridges, but at least I've got the manuals for them now. And then we have Hit the Ice. This one is just the box and the cartridge. I do not have a manual. doesn't have a tray either. And then Lethal Weapon, this is just the box. So if you have manuals for those, let me know. Also just the box is Barkley, Shut Up and Jam. And Sterling Sharp, End to End. P. 
PTO, Pacific Theater of Operations. Also does not have a manual. <laughs> then we're getting into the good stuff here. We have Mario's Early Years, Fun With Numbers. This is just a condition upgrade for me, so we're going to have a copy of this for sale at the store and on our website whenever I get around to it. Then we have Lemmings 2 Tribes. Abby really enjoys Lemmings, so um, I want her to play this one. Um, but I got this from Super Smash Games in Tacoma as well. I think it was like 35 bucks, which is a pretty good price. Uh, from Gamebound Video Games up uh, somewhere around Seattle. I don't know exactly what city they're in, uh, but I picked up Gun Force for the Super Nintendo. And this one still has the plastic on the box in basically mint condition. Uh, I think this was like 60, 65 bucks or 60 bucks, something like that which is a little bit more than like a regular complete copy goes for, but in this condition with the plastic on it, of course it's gonna go for more. Um, I love getting games with the plastic on them like this. This is how I try to find whatever I can. Um, so very, very awesome. It's a kind of an uncommon game anyway, so glad to get it in that condition. And then the last two ones here, uh, this one came from the same person that I got the Mega Man games from, and that is a complete copy of Stone Protectors. Very happy to get that one. Pretty cool little like uh, little like troll, like Ninja Turtle mixed with troll looking characters. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was like a cartoon in the 80s and they did like all sorts of little action figures and stuff, which I come across every now and then, but very cool to get that one. Pretty rare game. But then this one is very, very rare. You guys might know what it is if you've, if you've been watching the vlogs for a while. Um, someone contacted us with this. Uh, we're actually doing another deal with him right now. He's sending in some stuff. I was talking to him earlier through Instagram. Uh, but this is a very, very rare Super Nintendo game. I've never owned even a cartridge of this before. Um, so very, very glad to get a, a very pretty nice condition complete copy. The box is a l has a little push down on the front, which is kind of normal. Um, but it's not crushed or anything. It's in pretty good shape overall. That is a complete copy of Hurricanes. Which is like a, it's like a side-scrolling platformer mixed with like soccer stuff. I played this game, it's horrible. <laughs> um, I was actually kind of excited to play it because I thought it looked kind of cool from the screenshots. And having a soccer ball as your weapon I thought was kind of like a cool mechanic. But it controls really badly. It's not a fun game. <laughs> but it is very, very rare. So I'm very glad to get that. Thank you so much for offering that to me. You know who you are. Um... Very, very cool stuff. Um, I can't wait. I can't wait until the GameCube set is done and the Dreamcast set is done. And I don't really know what I'm going to focus on after that. But whenever I finally get around to Super Nintendo, that is going to be so much fun for me because I love getting Super Nintendo games. And I have a decent stack here. But when you compare it to like the NES or the Dreamcast even or the Switch or the Game Boy, which I don't even focus on Game Boy ever. I just happen to get a ton of them. Like... There's not that many Super Nintendo games here that I have to show you guys. So once I do focus on Super Nintendo, I'm going to go ham on that system. And I'm going to be getting so many games. And I'm so excited about that because, you know, whenever we go to other game stores, first I look at what I'm focusing on. So all the stores we went to on our trips, the first thing I looked at was GameCube. And I'm looking for games that I don't have. Uh, some of the more, like, you know, uncommon games are the ones I was trying to find. And then after that, <clears throat> I kind of just look around the whole store, and I just look for whatever is a good deal. <clears throat> like this, for example. I was not looking for this game. <clears throat> I don't really ever focus on PSP. Um, I think we have like 80 games for it, and that's just passively getting them here and there uh, whenever we see a good deal or whatever it is. But that's kind of how, how I have built my collection. You know, I focus on one or two systems at a time, which I actively seek games out for, but... For every other console, I just look for whatever's a good deal. I'm going for complete sets for pretty much everything, so it doesn't really matter what it is. If it's a good price, I'm willing to add it to the collection. So, you know, like, I don't know, Metal Gear Solid for Game Boy Color. This is a rare game, but it's going to be a long time before I'm focusing on Game Boy Color and trying to actively complete that set. I'm not much of a handheld gamer, so that that system is low on my priority list, but that's a hard to find game. So I'm not gonna pass it up if I see it for a good price. And that's just how I've tried to build my collection, you know? So that's why you see me picking up so much random stuff here. 
you know, I've got PSP games, I've got Atari Lynx games even. I don't even have an Atari Lynx console, but if I see the games for a cheap price, if it's a good deal, I'm going to pick them up. And that's how I've built my collection to what it is. If I only bought stuff for the systems I was focusing on, these pickup videos would be 10 minutes long. <laughs> so that's pretty much everything that I have to show you guys for this one. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, there were a few things that I didn't get into this video um, that I had mentioned in the vlogs. I still have a bunch of Atari Jaguar boxes in my office at the store. Uh, there's no cartridges, they're just box and manual only. And there's like 15 of them. Uh, but I didn't have time to get those into my spreadsheet before filming, which is what I like to do so that once I turn the camera off right now, I could put all this stuff away. It's all cataloged. It's all accounted for. It's in my spreadsheet. Um, everything's good to go. So I try to get it in there before I film the pickup video, and I just did not have time to do that for the Jaguar stuff. So you might see that in the next pickup video, which might not even be in this house. Who knows? We're trying to move, and... I hope it's not in this house because that would mean that we move sooner which would be a good thing we're trying to buy a house and hopefully get a bigger and better game room and i'm so excited to set that up and share the progress with you guys so that's going to be it for this pickup video i really hope that you guys have enjoyed it if you did please do not forget to smack the like button leave a comment down below and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one